Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Peter. 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 14 through 18. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. The title of the message is, It's Time to Grow in 2022. It's Time to Grow in 2022. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14. The Bible says, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, and they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, Seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Brother Matthew, can you please pray for the message? Pastor Jay, to be filled with your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that yes. we may speak clearly and that we may be filled with the Holy Spirit so we may comprehend, Lord God, what he is teaching us. Amen. And I pray that you bless the service, bless the health of all that are here, and bless the health of those that couldn't come today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 It's time to grow in 2022. Everyone wants to grow in certain ways. Physically, you know, those with children, you know, if you have a kid and they stay the same height when they were one or two, there's a problem. Then you start going to worry. You do whatever you can as a parent to feed them well and to give them, you know, whatever is necessary. Take them to the doctor, see what's wrong with them. Because it's normal for a person to grow. And especially if you have good nutrition, you're going to grow. Unfortunately, you know, there are third world countries where you know, they don't eat enough food, so they don't grow. However, they don't grow normally, but they still grow. As Christians, if you're saved, it is your opportunity and it's your privilege and it's also your responsibility to grow. As spiritually speaking, after you got saved, you can't stay where you are. Right, right. If you've been saved for a long time, you should have grown, yeah. as spiritually speaking. However, so many Christians, especially the majority of the Christians in America, they don't grow. Right. They're, they get saved, and they're about baby, like how they were 10, 20 years ago. Unfortunately, People don't take it seriously. People think that, you know, growing is for pastors, teachers, people in the ministry, missionaries. No, I mean, you need to grow as a Christian, whoever you are, right? Whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're in between, you have to grow as a Christian. When we look at today's verses, in order for you to grow, let's look at verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent. You have to be diligent. You have to work hard at something in order to grow. When you strive to reach your goal, when you strive to earn something, you work hard at it, right? Yeah. But as a Christian, you have to be diligent in order to grow. It's literally you know, first qualification after you get saved. If you trusted Jesus Christ and him alone to save you from hell and trusted him as your Lord and Savior and nothing else, 
then you become child of God. And after that, in order for you to grow, you have to be diligent. As Christians, it's not something where you just sit down and someone's going to just feed you, mouth feed you every single day. Of course, when you come to Wednesday's night service, Sunday service, you know, any other ministry, when it's open, you come like Jubilee and blow out, you're going to grow a little bit. Yeah. However, that's not enough. Right. It's a common thing that we always talk about, right? Can you survive by eating just one day? Maybe you could, but that's not going to be you know, healthy for you. Say you only eat on Sunday, and then you go home for the rest of the week, Monday through Saturday. You're going to be weak. I mean, you're going to be weak. And when you're weak, you don't really want to do anything. And when you don't want to do anything, you're not going to do anything for the Lord. That's why you have to take this seriously in 2022, where you have to examine yourself. Have I been growing as a Christian since I got saved? Did I stall in the middle? Did I grow up to be like, you know, three feet? But did I stall at three feet when... All the other, you know, brethren are growing, you know. They're becoming, you know, our young kids over there in the back, right? They're growing. They continue to grow. You have to grow. And in order for you to do that, you actually have to be diligent. Again, lazy Christians won't do anything for the Lord. Lazy Christians will not accomplish anything. Being lazy will not get you anywhere. That's just not in just Christian world but in regular world. Yes. I mean, in order to live a balanced Christian life, you have to be diligent in everything and everywhere you're at. I mean, if you're only diligent in reading the Word of God, but you're lazy at your work, well, something's wrong with you, right? Preaching. If you're really good at what you do at work, but you're lazy with the Word of God, well, then something's wrong with you. I mean, it has to add, you know, one plus one, right, equals two, whatever anybody says, right? You have to be diligent wherever you are. So as a father, you have to be diligent. You have to lead your family as the head of the household. You are the one who should be reading the Bible. You're the one who should be doing the Bible study with your family. You're the one who should be saying that, let's sing a hymn together. I'm pretty sure... Many of the fathers who's listening probably have never done that, or you might have tried it, but it's not something that you are willing to do on a daily basis because you're lazy. Simple as that. You know, a lot of times you and I give so many excuses. I'm busy. I'm tired. You know, so many things are going on in my life, right? But if you were to give an opportunity to do what you love to do, you're going to do it without any hesitation. For example, if you love sports, right? And if you love to go to the games, say a baseball game, and someone gave you this ticket to a playoff game, you know, maybe World Series, and you go there and you receive it, what did you do? You weren't lazy about it. You are pretty diligent about going to the game. Why? Because you love it. Because you wanted to enjoy it. Because you feel like belonging to it with other fans in the stadium. However, when it comes to your Christian walk, when it comes to your walk with the Lord, you don't feel the same. Just like the Ephesus church, you know, you left the first love. I'm pretty sure many of you, including myself, when we first got saved, when we really you know, we're so happy and joyful when we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior right. and knowing for sure that we're going to heaven. Yeah. You know, our life has passed from death unto life oh, and amen. no more hell. And I don't ev- ever, ever have to worry about burning in hell. Thank you, Lord. You have so much joy. Amen. It's like your life literally, you know, focused on the Lord Jesus Christ and it revolved around Lord Jesus Christ. And you couldn't wait to read the Word of God. You couldn't wait to pray. You couldn't wait to come to the door. I mean, come to church when the door opened. You couldn't wait to sing hymns. You couldn't wait to give testimony. You couldn't wait to preach. You couldn't wait to knock on doors. You couldn't wait to just talk about Lord Jesus Christ. 
However, those days are long gone for some of you because you kind of grew. You grew because of your you know, excitement in the beginning. However, it just waned. It just you know, disappeared. How about that? Why did that happen? Why? Because you've been lazy, simple as that. Yes. I mean, there are no excuses. You know, when you and I don't accomplish anything, it's because we're lazy. Right. You know, ask your wife. Ask your husband. Guilty. They ask you to do something, and they ask, hey, honey, you know, did you do it as I ask you? I'm working on it. You know, I'll finish it tomorrow. You know, and then a lot of times, what does what happens to lazy people? They break promises. Yes. And they break promises. I mean, I'll be the first one to admit it, right? You know, whether it's with your family, whether it's your friends, whether it's with your coworkers. But number one thing is with the Lord. Sometimes, right, you come to the altar or wherever you are. You talk to the Lord and you promise to the Lord, Lord, you know, man, I've been convicted by this preaching through your word and I'm really going to change, right? For example, Lord, I'm going to read your word every single day. I mean, that's, that's the commitment and the promise I'm making with you. And what do you know? It's January 4th and you stopped doing it already, right? So you got convicted today, January 2nd, so you do it today. You half-heartedly do it tomorrow, you know, because you, know, you keep on getting that conviction from the Holy Ghost. And then fourth day comes, and you're like, oh, I'm too tired. I'll make it up tomorrow. You know, once you start having that mindset of trying to make things up, you know, you'll never, ever make it up True. in time. Oh, yeah. How many people last year in 2021 actually read through the whole Bible? I know you read through the whole Bible if you're diligent enough. However, those of you who started off well and you stop in the middle, it's because you became lazy and you started saying to yourself, you know what, I'll make it up tomorrow. You know, I'll read six chapters tomorrow and then you don't do it. You know what, I'll read you know, nine chapters today. You don't do it, I'll read 12 chapters. You know what, all I have to do is spend five hours you know, on a Saturday afternoon, and I'll catch up to it. How many of you actually do it, right? I mean, I tried. It's really hard, yes. right? Sitting down at a single, you know, spot and trying to read your Bible for eight hours. Oh, yes. I mean, some people do it, you know. God bless them, right? Amen. But if you don't do it consistently, and when you're not diligent, you are not going to grow. And that's why you and I have to realize that, man, How lazy have we been as Christians, especially when it comes to things of God? Think about it. If you are really diligent about things of God, you're going to be diligent about other things. Because why? Lord wants you to be a good testimony in other things. However, if you're not diligent with things of God, then I could pretty much, you know, say, because from my own experience and, you know, looking at other folks, that you're pretty lazy in other things, too. I mean, there, there's no if and buts about it. I mean, if you are willing and if you are dedicated and if you're diligent enough to, you know, read, a, read your Bible and pray every day, just like that song goes, then I'm pretty sure you're going to be pretty diligent and reliable with your work with other things, where you don't just give, you know, just your minimal effort, but you're doing your best, right? Because you're constantly being fed by the Word of God, and you have more strength. That's one thing, too. If you don't grow spiritually, you're not going to have strength to do things of God. Think about it. You know, if I don't eat for, say, like a day or two, it will be hard for me to, you know, run a mile, you know, It'll be hard for me to, you know, pick up heavy things. It'll be hard for me to really concentrate. Why? Because I don't have that necessary nutrients. I don't have that energy. Sometimes you guys are wondering, you know, even during the preaching time, you are daydreaming and a lot of these thoughts come through your head, right? Whether it's the worldly things, whether it's your mental issues, physical issues, whatever it may be. Why is that? Because you're so weak. Because you can't concentrate. Because you're so full of sin, 
your flesh, the devil, and the world has gotten to you that, you know, you know, you know you should do the right thing, but you can't do it because you're so weak. At that point, you have hope, though. You could actually rely on Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You got to admit it. You know, that's, that's one thing, right? It's one thing that many people have a hard time doing, admitting, right? You know, I, you and I have to admit, like, today, you know what? I haven't grown like I needed to yeah. in the past year or past years, right? Or past tens of years, right. you know, it depends on how long you've been saved. And I really need to grow in 2022 because who knows what's going to happen with the world, the, how the world's turning into, we're getting near and near to the end. You know, you don't know when Lord's gonna come back. I think last thing you wanna be, you know, regretting is like, you know what, I had a chance to grow, but I neglected it. And I just said no to it. You know, I became lazy as usual. And at the judgment seat of Christ, you know, you'll be full of shame. I mean, Apostle Paul said it's a terrible, you know. It's not sugarcoating things, right? A lot of, lot of people out there try to sugarcoat, you know, scary God. You know, God is love. God is love. You know, God is, you know, jealous God. God will send a soul to hell for all eternity. Think about it. When you and I, you know, look at things, we'll be like, oh, man, you know what? If, if they went to jail for like 5,000 years, maybe, you know, maybe it's time for them to get out of jail, right? I think they've done enough, right? But Lord God says, you know what? If you reject, you know, my salvation, if you reject Jesus Christ, you know, right now, you're going to burn in hell for our eternity. Yes. That's where people have a hard time accepting it. But that, how are you able to understand an almighty God with your small, tiny brain, right? right? I mean, God who created the universe, you know, this book, right? How do you think that you have the capacity to truly understand? A lot of times that's why faith is involved. You know, we believe what the Bible says. Sometimes we don't understand. But it is so simple, though. God said, trust Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, during this church age, right? You trust Jesus Christ and Him alone, you don't have to do anything. Unlike, you know, other teachings, right? You know, calls over there. Right? Or you have to trust Christ, you have to do good works, right? And some people say, you know, you'll never know, right? Like, you never know. I mean, have you ever talked to a Calvinist out there? Yeah. It's sad. Do you know where you're going after you die? Well, only God knows, you know? Right. And what about all the verses, you know, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, that ye may believe on the name of Son of God. I mean, Bible says, he that hath the Son has life, he that hath not the Son of God has not life. First John 5, 12 and 13. That means, Lord wants you to know. Lord wants me to know. Of course, when people take any single verse out of context, they could create their own religion. Yeah. I'll tell you a secret, right? You want to become famous and you want to, you know, make some money, whether it's YouTube or anywhere, you know, just take a single verse out of the Bible and start your own religion. And people are going to follow. You know, it's funny. People don't want to follow truth many times, but people would love to follow, you know, those wrong doctrines. You know, because why? The devil wants them to stay in there, be yeah. trapped there, and burn in hell together for all eternity. Because there are many verses in the Bible, if you don't rightly divide the word, you know, there's different ways to go to heaven, right? right. Tribulation, salvation is different. Yeah. You know, what happened in the Old Testament is different. Even during transitional time, you know, after the Lord ascended and before the Bible was completed, you know, it's different. That's why I call it transition time, right? You know, how you could see, you know, how Peter's approach to salvation changed, right. you know, throughout the first few chapters of Book of Acts. Right. And, of course, salvation, you know, moved on from the Jewish people to Gentiles. Yeah. And all those things happen, yes. right? Then, if you're not diligent enough to study the Word of God, 
And when those false teachers and preachers come and try to steer you to the wrong direction, you'll follow. It's amazing how people don't do any fact checks nowadays. I, I, I'm just amazed because they believe everything they see on TV. They believe everything they see on YouTube, whether it's good or bad. And instead of doing your own due diligence, instead of you studying the Word of God, instead of you praying, and instead of you really trying to understand, you just blindly follow. That's why some of you guys are always channel flipping, you know, in the YouTube channel. Instead of staying in, you know, Bible-believing doctrine and teachings and preaching and growing thereby, you're trying to accept and I mean, grow with every other nutrient. What is bad for you and I? Just food-wise, right? If you and I eat sugar, pound of sugar every single day, you know, I don't think it's going to be good for us, right? All right? As much as I love sugar, as much as I love, you know, delicious cakes and anything else, but if I were to eat like a, you know, whole, say, cheesecake, right? New York cheesecake every single day, something's got to go wrong with me. <laughs> Thanks for your confession, brother, right? You know? I have a long ways to go, I think. Yeah, right? But if you put in those bad stuff over and over and over, it's going to stunt your growth, right? Instead of eating balanced meal, right? There's protein, carb, you know, there's veggies and whatnot. You're just concentrating on one certain sector. Then what's going to happen? You're going to get, you're going to get sick. Has anyone been sick recently or past year? Man, when you're sick, you can't really do anything for the Lord. I mean, when you're sick, you can't grow. That's why parents are scared when they see their young ones get sick because they're vulnerable, because their immune is not as strong right. as a young man like Brother Matthew right there. Yeah. Then what do you think is going to happen to you, spiritually speaking? When you haven't grown, you're very vulnerable. Think about it. You'll be attacked more easily, which means you get sick, which means you fall more easily. That's why you have to get out of that state. You can't be babies no more. I mean, you have to start grow. I mean, you got to grow to be, you know, young man. You got to become a, you know, soldier. You got to become like an aged person. Then let's look at, let's look at this, you know, growing, you know, growing stages. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So let's think about which stage you're in when it comes to your spiritual state. And let's be honest with the Lord. I mean, Lord, you know, if you've been saved for a while, but you've been neglecting the Word of God and you've been lazy about it, hey, just confess your sins and get right with the Lord and be diligent. There's no if and buts about it, and there's no reason for you to give any excuses, yes. especially you know, in front of Almighty God, especially if the Lord's inside of you and if you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. There's no reason for you to give excuse. There's no reason for me to give any excuse. I mean, I just say, you know what, Lord? I've been bad. I've been wrong. I've sinned from the bottom of my heart, Lord. You know, I want to get right with you. Then the Lord's going to be like, okay, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, 1 John 1, 9. Then you start over with a clean slate, right? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. The Bible says, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So when you first got saved, you're a baby. And when I first got saved, you know, I was a baby. I mean, that's how it is, right? Spiritually speaking, you know. Then, as a baby in Christ, what's going to happen? You got to be very, very vulnerable. You know, there are many instances, you know, when we go door knocking, you know, maybe in your life as well, you just got saved. Suddenly someone knocks on the door. 
And then you open the door, and it's Mormons, right? You open the door, and it's Jehovah's Witness. I mean, you open the door, you know, and it's some like, you know, Presbyterian or Charismatics, right? And they're like, hey, you know, let me show you, you know, how to go to heaven. Let me, why don't you come to our church? You know, this is the right doctrine. Many, many times when Christians do not grow accordingly, and right away, what happens? They get swept, ab- swept away by those folks. Yeah. Satan will not sit still. Woo. Satan's like, you know what? I'm so angry. Yeah. I'm going to be angry for all eternity because you got saved. Yeah. We'll be separated for all eternity. But you know what? I don't want you to do anything for the Lord. I don't want anybody ever to get saved through your life through your testimony. So let's make it happen. So you, after you got, I know you're saved, but you know what? Let's leave you there. You know, stay where you will never, ever grow. That's why many folks, after they got saved, I believe majority of the Christians, especially in America, are at this stage. You're just a baby in Christ. You're you're just, you're, you're still waiting for just milk. You're just crying. You're just being so selfish. I mean, babies are selfish, right? You know, they just want what they want. And sometimes, again, I mentioned it in the past, right? They get smart. I seen, you know, one year old, one and a half year olds. I seen them. They control their parents already. I mean, literally, like, they don't want to eat that food. They grab their hair. And then they just throw it. But parents, you know, they're messed up. They don't discipline the kid. They don't teach the kid. They think that kids don't know anything. They're like, okay, you know, my sweet little baby, he's okay. You know, that's so cute, you know. I mean, they're throwing all those food in your face. They're like you're full of, you know, stuff on your face. Oh, you're so cute. You know, let me take a picture of you and me, you know. Uh, this will be a good memory when I grow up. Think about it. Then what happens? Those, those little babies think that you know, everything's okay. Everything that they do is right. So when they want food, what do they do? Even though they don't need to cry, they just cry. Right. Man, they become a very good hypocrite. And they become very good fakers. Right? I mean, some of them, I'm sure you've seen them before. They cry one second. The next moment, they start smiling. Like, they're crying, you know, they're wailing. And then you give them what they want. Maybe it's a cookie. They receive it, and they start smiling. I mean, how does that happen? Because they're manipulating you. I mean, they're really good manipulators. Then as babies, that's what you and I are doing. I guess the little babies in Christ, spiritually speaking, what are we doing, right? We're just crying. We just want what we want, you know, flesh-wise, right? And when you don't grow as a babe in Christ, especially, you know, drinking the milk through the word of God, then what's going to happen? You're going to stay where you are, and you're going to just be that pouting little baby. Then you'll never grow. You'll never be, you know, little kid anytime soon. You'll just stay where you are. That's why they say, you have to have a childlike mind. Don't be childish, right? Big difference. Don't be childish, but be childlike. Have that you know, innocent heart to learn and grow. You, know? you and I should be more childlike when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to our you know, walk with the Lord. Yeah. We should be fully trusting 100%. Yeah. We should be you know, with faith 100%. You know, we should be following And we should follow men of God who follow the Lord. Then, if you grow out of that baby stage, then you're going to start growing. Let's go to the next stage. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. So, I'll say, you know, what will be a baby stage? You know, what we just saw in 1 Corinthians 3.1, maybe up to two years old. Maybe up to two. So, many of People, many saved Christians, they only grow up to be two. 
spiritually speaking. 1 John chapter 2. Kind of look at verse 1. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. Now next stage is being a little children. You know, little children. You know, maybe you're three, four, five, right? You've grown out of baby stage now. You drank enough milk. Now, what's the common characteristic of little children? They're copiers. They love to copy, right? When you see, you know, kids like three, four, five, you know, six, right? Some of you guys have them. And then look at those kids in the back. They love to imitate. They love to copy, right? You know, it's a cool thing, you know, when kids see someone, you know, receive, say, accolade for what they've done. For example, good examples, right? If they see their parents always, you know, encouraging each other, saying right things to each other, then they're going to say the right things. Right. However, you know many times, parents, right? Some bad word slips out of your mouth. Man, those kids, they're, they're, they're sharp. Yeah. They pick it up and say, you know, your parents are fighting with each other. You're like blankety blank to each other. And suddenly, out of the blue, next day, your kid is saying, hey, mom, blankety blank. Hey, dad, blankety blank. What have they learned? They're just copying you. I mean, they're just imitating you. Right. Then, as a spiritual little child of God, you have to imitate the right things. You have to imitate and you have to copy the right things. Then you have to use, you have to copy the right word of God, which is King James Bible. Yes. So many, so many people at this stage fall as well yes. because of wrong doctrines and wrong Bible. I mean, if your Bible denies deity of Christ, how are you ever going to grow, right? I mean, look at all the other translations. I mean, they change, you know, 1 Timothy 3.16 when he says God was manifest in the flesh. They change it to he was manifest in the flesh. And they get rid of verses like, you know, in the book of Acts chapter 8, right? Yeah. And then just skip it. And then I think it's at 837. Correct me if I'm wrong, you know, Bible scholars out there. You know, and you're like, oh, so I, I need to be baptized in order to be saved right. because they got rid of that confession of the unit, right? right. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then what's going to happen? If you imitate Wrong Bible, wrong doctrines, and wrong people, you will never grow. You will actually go back to your, you, you would have been actually better being a baby in Christ. Because you're going to start creating damages, right? When I look at one or two year old babies, they really can't do too much damage. Because a lot of times, they could only crawl, right? They can't really walk that well. And then you could really control them. Man, but three, four, five, six, they're monsters. They could run everywhere. If you don't look at them for a few seconds, they're gone. I mean, I was one of them. I mean, when I was, when I was a young, like we're at a you know, major marketplace, and my mom tells me that, hey, you know, that was scary. Like she looked one way, I was with aunt as well, she looked other, and I was gone. And then they were scared, you know. Well, I guess I went to somebody and started crying, you know. And then looking, I'm looking for my mom and stuff. But that's a common thing. When kids are like little, three, four, five, six, they'll just go anywhere. And they love to copy. Then as a Bible believer and as Christian, you want to grow? Then you have to go to the right Bible-believing church if there's local church nearby because you have to gather together and you have to grow. I mean, a lot of times because of fellowship, right teaching, this environment will help you defeat sin, the devil, and the war, and the flesh, and grow in the Word of God. And you encourage each other, and you use the perfect Word of God. So it depends. When you're little children, who you copy will determine whether you go to the next stage or stay where you are. So what's the next stage? Let's turn to Galatians chapter 3. So now you're growing. You're not baby anymore. You're not a little child anymore. 
Let's go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 20. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. Now, you and I have to continuously grow. Wherever stage we're at, you know, baby or little child or this stage, we got to continue to grow. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, the Bible says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Now you're a child. So there's baby, little child, and child. So child will be about teenager's age. Teenagers, think about it. Think about when you turn 13. You know, a lot of times, I don't know if it's still true because, you know, world has gotten so wicked with this, all the technology. I mean, when you're growing up, you know, 12 and 13 was huge difference. Yeah. Because 12, you're still considered, you know, like a little child. But 13, that teen comes in, right? Now you become teenager. And when you're a teenager, you think you're right. You think you're always right. Your parents are always wrong. And one good thing about being a teenager, though, you're pretty bold. You become courageous. You are willing to do things that you never thought you would do when you're a little child. That's why you see so many high school kids, middle school kids do crazy stuff nowadays. I mean, you ask them when they were five or six, would you do it when you were then? Very few will say, no, I never thought I would do such a thing. But you become courageous, and, but you are also very rebellious. Yeah. So it's very dangerous age. If, you're, if you are in that spiritual age, spiritual state, where like, you're like a child and you're a teenager, you really, really need to use your energy on the right things. You always have to be careful. You can't let the pride get in the way. I mean, teenagers, right? Parents, what do teenagers say? I know. I know dad. I know mom. I know everything. And you, as a parent, you're teaching them or counseling them. Hey, I went through the same age, you know? Yeah. Listen to me, right? But many times people have to go through their own mistake before they wake up. But however, some wise ones will, you know, save some time by listening by understanding that, hey, my parents are teaching me and telling me what they've gone through. Teenagers, you know, what do they do like they thought they'll never do? They start doing drugs at this age, a lot of times. That's when they get all these bad influences, right? Middle school, high school, drugs are rampant. I mean, you don't even have to look far, right? Probably someone in your classroom can provide you drugs. Someone at school definitely will provide drugs, right? I mean, you don't even want to go to the bathroom anymore because it just smells like marijuana, right? Right. Then, if you go the wrong way at this stage, it becomes multiple times harder to come back. It will stunt your growth. Literally, they're very good, you know, young man and young woman, very good. Christian men and women who are serving the Lord, growing up in the Word of God. But at this point, they got too proud. At this point, they thought their boldness and courage is better than anybody else, right? And they start looking down at people. They start looking down at the teachers and, you know, pastors that they looked up to and came. And they're like, you know what? I know better than Dr. Kim. I know better than, you know, Dr. Ruckman. You know what? Their doctrine is wrong. You know, I interpret it better than them. And they become very proud. And what happens? They become that, you know, stray animal. They go away. They go away. And at that point, when teenagers make mistakes, it takes years and years, maybe never, for them to come back and get right with the Lord. That's why if you are in that state, you know, humble yourself always. Check your pride and use that, you know, exuberant energy. Use that, you know, zeal and use that, you know, boldness and courage to serve the Lord the right way. And you got to be humble about it. Then now you're a teenager. And after teenager, you could expect 
you know, you become a young man, right? Let's go to First John again, First John chapter 2, First John chapter 2, First John chapter 2, verse 18, First John chapter 2, verse 18. First John chapter 2, verse 18. The Bible says, Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. I think I have the wrong verse, everybody, but I apologize. But it's, it's 14, 14, yeah, 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young man, young man. Yeah. The same chapter. Just needed to go up, everyone. Verse 14, young man. Young man, what's the characteristic of young man? They're strong. They're strong. You know, these are the folks, right, between the ages of, you know, 18, you know, 40, however you are, right? You know, some of you, you know, you always feel like you're a young man at heart, right? Fathers, like, you know, I'm a young man, right? You can do many things, right? At this stage, you know, you're, you're, you might be that person, you know, always out at the street preaching, visitation, you know, helping out at the church. You know, you're like a multitasker, right? You not only pray, you not only read your Bible, you're always involved in the ministry. And you have, you know, a lot of confidence. You know, you're like strong. You're like, you know what, I, I know doing this for the Lord is not for vain. And I'm yeah. going to do it. And as a young man, that's why, you know, a lot of young men are recruited as soldiers. You know, they're out there. They're patriotic. They're serving the Lord. I mean, serving the country. And you become like that. You're like, man, I love to, lo I mean, I love to just serve the Lord. Amen. However, there is a catch. Who was like this young man in the word of God? Apostle Peter, right? He was gung-ho about it. You know, he said, I'll die for you, Lord. But what happened? He denied the Lord, right? Yeah. Thereafter, thrice, right? Then you have to be careful, right? It's good that you're strong and you're serving the Lord. But because you don't have enough experience, don't think that you can just go out there and just do it, you know, without any prayer, without any humbling experience, without checking yourself. A lot of times people fall in this stage. Why? Because lack of experience. Simple as that. However, you can always overcome it. Just like soldiers, you know, when they first enlist, they're in the army. It takes them time. It takes them time to learn all the ropes, per se. Then, as a teenage, as a young man, you know, in this spiritual state, you're doing a lot of things in the ministry, but don't get cocky, don't get proud. Always look after others, always check your heart, and you always have to be more careful and careful and careful. Why? This is stage where devil's like, man, I've had it, man, I've had enough with you. No more, man. Stop serving the Lord. Stop, man. You've done enough. I've watched enough. You know what? I'm going to send you some, you know, temptation along the way. I want you to fall. And then one of the best ways for a person to fall is what? When pride gets into their heart. Yeah. They're like, you know what? I'm something. Man, I'm preaching the word of God on the street. Where's that brother or sister? Right? And you start questioning other brothers and sisters and criticizing. And you suddenly go, you know what? I led 10 people to the Lord last Saturday doing visitation. Did anybody else have double digit? I mean, now you start getting proud. 
I mean, you're, you feel like, man, I'm the best soldier out there for the Lord. But that's when, just like when it happened to Apostle Peter, you're going to deny the Lord. When that trial, when that hardship hits you right away, you'll be the first person to fall. Right. That's why, you know, as a young man, it's good that you have a lot of strengths. It's good that you have zeal, but you don't have enough experience. You really have to be careful. You have to be careful. That means that you have to always pray. You know, you have to judge yourself and make sure that, you know, you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, you know, don't do it out of your own zeal. Don't do it out of your own strength and pride. Always, you know, it has to be filled with the Holy Ghost and do it in the will of God. And quickly, the, who's the next one? You know, we're in the same, same book, 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. And the next stage is fathers. Fathers. Now you're a young man. Now you become a father. And now you're living for your family, right? But to get to this point, think about your own Christian walk. Spiritually speaking, right? Have you led anyone to the Lord? Right? I mean, have you been a good witness for Jesus Christ? How do you become a father? You become a father by having an offspring, right? You know, spiritually speaking, I mean, have you led anyone to the Lord, right? You're like, you know what? I tried. I talked to three persons, but they all rejected me. That's it? You only talked to three persons? I mean, there are more people out there. You can't stop. You got to continue. I mean, it's all progressing, right? From a baby to a little child to a child teenager to a young man, not your father. You really care for the lost souls out there. I mean, literally. You know, I know some of you guys already have it. You know, keep that up. Like, you know what? I really, really, you know, my life is all about, you know, leading others to the Lord. I mean, that's the purpose, though. You and I are here on earth not to be wealthy, you know, not to be, you know, famous. We're here so that we can lead as many people to the Lord. Yes. I mean, then why, why don't we be in heaven, right? Just like that hymn, right? We could be with the Lord, you know, in heaven, right? With our perfect body. But instead, we're still here on earth. Why? Because we can do something for the Lord. And then you're going to be thinking about lost souls more and more. Yes. And lastly, this is last stage. Let's go to Philemon, book of Philemon. Philemon, right after Titus, book of Philemon, we're going to look at verse 9. Verse 9, the Bible says, Yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such an one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Now this last stage, you're that aged Christian. You are at the final stage. You're a great example to other Christians. And it's your last stage. All you are seeking, you just want the Lord to come back. Man, you love the Lord to come back. And you continue to bear fruits. You're continuing to bear fruits because you're still, you know, father, right? But you're aged. And now you're waiting. Just like, you know, Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4, right? You're looking for the Lord. And you are being a great example. And you're continuing to keep that childlike faith. You know, you're innocent. You're continuing to serve the Lord. So what does all this mean? In this new year, you know, let all of us grow. Grow yes. in the knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ. Whichever state you and I are in, we need to grow, Right? If you're already at aged, hey, keep it up, right? Yeah. If you're just a baby, hey, start, desire the sin sincere milk of the word, right? Yeah. yeah, grow, start drinking the, you know, milk, right? I and mean, if you're a little child, imitate, come on, imitate good, good things, right? I mean, teenagers, hey, you know, you got, a, you got a lot of work to do, but hey, you have a lot of energy, just like young men, fathers, and the age. And you know what? If the Lord were to come back this year, you and I will be found faithful. And the Lord will tell us, well done, that good and faithful servant, because you are a diligent 
you are a Christian, you're my child, yes. who are willing to grow, just like a childlike, you know, innocent mind. Let us grow in 2022. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for saving us from hell through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. However, you know, after we got saved, Lord, for some of us, we just haven't grown. For some of us, we grew, but we stopped growing. Heavenly Father, help us to get right, you know, spend time with you sincerely, and recognize where we are in our spiritual state, and help us to just continue to grow this year so that we'll be an instrument used by you to lead more people to you, Lord God. I pray that you'll be with everyone who's here and who's listening, Lord. Whatever they're going through, Lord, please be with them. I pray that you'll be with everyone's health. I pray that all of us will realize that living in your will is the best thing possible. And whatever difficulties and obstacles that we're going through, Lord, Lord God, please resolve it according to your will. And Lord, but our number one prayer is that even so come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.